welcome to my studio in Margate in Kent. My name's Brian. I've been painting for many years and I've been running art classes for about 13, 14 years now. So I'd like to take this opportunity and film in my classes, put them together so that you can watch and follow along with us and hopefully learn a new things and maybe revisit some old things. The classes and courses that I run here in my studio help to support a project that I set up about 16 years ago with a friend of mine. We're called Looking Ahead and we work with young adults with learning needs where we support them towards realistic work and independent living. So if you'd like to find out more, please visit my website www.briandavenportartist.com And don't forget to like or subscribe if you like the channel. So let's get started. Hi, welcome back to my studio. I've just stretched the paper of 300 grams and 140 pounds. I'm wetting from the top down to the riser line as usual with just clean water. Making sure I cover the whole surface of the paper with just clean water. I've drawn round my mount and that's a 20 by 16 and I'm just on that horizon line there with just the water. Pick it up some more sienna. I'm going to paint it from the top down to the horizon line. Going straight across and over the edges where the mount will sit so it won't be seen. Making it a little darker in the centre by picking up some more raw sienna. Painting that in darker there and taking it again down to the horizon line. Keep it nice and straight. And then when I've done this, I will be picking up some paint grey and ultramarine blue, mixing the two colours together, similar to what we did last week, and just bringing in from the right side of the paint and the left side. This is all wet into wet, so the paint will run on my page. And as it dries, it will dry with a softer line a softer edge, creating the effect of distance. Try not to meet in the middle and keeping that nice yellow light coming through to create an early morning sky. Going to be adding a little bit more paint, keeping that line straight to the bottom, picking up some more paint now. And placing it on the left side, well once a row of trees that are in the distance about there, and the same on the other side. Just putting another layer of paint. Just darken down both sides a little bit more. The ultramarine and a little bit of Payne's Grey. Pick up a bit of Payne's Grey and ultramarine blue. I'm just tapping in shapes and marks to represent distant trees. Keeping it on the horizon line on both sides. This is all still wet into wet. Bringing in the edge of the path in the distance. And in a moment I'm going to pick up a, a handle of one of my brushes and just scratch in little trees in the distance. This makes dents and scratches into the paper, so the wet paint will flow into them. And as they dry, they will dry as dark trees. 
picking up the brush and just straighten down the edge here and bringing in that path. This is more ultramarine blue than Payne's grey I'm putting on here. And just leaving texture of tree and foliage. A moment this is going to dry. Keep the edge straight. Keep the brush straight in line with the horizon line. In a moment I'm going to pause my video so it can dry. So you paint up to this stage within the painting and then when you get this far you're scratching the trees in you stop start my video again and then follow along. I'm picking up some more Payne's Grey on my round brush and I'm going to just scratch in distant shrubs below the trees in the back. Just gently scratch them in, random shapes, leaving some of the light colour showing through and some of the darks. Keep on the horizon line as you go along. I'm going to do this on both sides. There we go. Just bringing in more paints grey and blue, ultramarine, and just keeping on that horizon line on this side as well. Taking it along, just gently touching the paint to the paper. little marks, little trees, little shrubs. Again, there's no rush with this, just take your time. And then I'm going to just pick up some more Payne's Grey. And I'm going to run it along the bottom edge of that shrubs that I've just put in just to gently level it out and creating the edge of the path as I'm coming closer. Leaving a little bit of the white paper there. And in a moment I'm going to leave this, let it dry. And then I'm going to wet the white paper with clean water being careful not to catch the edge and work it across with a flat brush down to the bottom of the paper picking up some raw sienna and covering this with a flat brush and a chisel edge as I get to the center with raw sienna. Go straight across, back the other way, filling in the bottom half of this paper, chisel edged, and just very carefully just tapping the back there, leaving a little bit of the white paper showing if you can. And then I'm going to pick up some ultramarine blue and a little touch of Payne's grey and do what we did in the sky. Go on to the left hand side leaving the path edge and coming on to the right hand side down to the bottom just bringing this ultramarine blue and a very little Payne's grey into the centre and carefully creating the edge of a path with the edge of your brush on a chisel edge, keeping it flat and straight with the horizon line. You can see the path appearing here. I'm going to leave it to dry now. So you paint up to this stage while I pause my picture and then start it again. You can see it's dry, the third lighter. 
and then pick up some paint grey and ultramarine blue and just bring in both sides the right and the left and leaving the edge of the path by turning the brush to a chisel edged there's more paints grey in this colour than blue and leaving little textured marks on the paper as you can see just by the way I'm moving my brush and the closer it gets to us the darker so I put more paints grey to the mix and less water and in a moment when I've straightened out the edges I'm going to let it dry and again you pause the video and then you paint this in and then start the video again and follow along with me on the next stage of the painting you'll see the change in colour as it dries and now I'm painting in the trees in the distance just by using the chisel edge brush with paint grey and just gently tapping on the paintbrush to the paper leaving little marks just go below the horizon line with these trees and every now and then just add a branch Just be gentle with the brush, don't push too hard, just let the hairs of the brush just catch the paper. You put in as many trees as you like, you don't have to copy me exactly, just be inspired. And again just add some branches in on these trees just by touching the brush using the width of the brush to create the width of the, the branch this is about an inch brush that I'm using here sable but again you don't need a sable brush you can use a nylon or a squirrel I'm putting in bigger trees here now I'll just make them a little wider same technique just touch the brush to the paper very gently pick up some more paint not a lot of water I'll take these up to about a third of the way up put in some branches and just break them away Hopefully you're following along with me. If you have any comments to leave or any questions, please do so in the comment box below. And I'll try to answer them as soon as I possibly can. Add a few more branches in very gently, don't push hard. Put some trees on this side now, same sort of height. I cut across the light here in the sky so it stands out better. Just add in a few more branches on here. Pick 
and that's how our panes grow. Not a lot of water, and just touch it to the paper very gently. Take some branches in. All watercolour pictures are painted from the back to the front. The lighter the colours are at the back, as it gets closer to you, the darker the colour gets. This is going to be an early morning sky as you're out walking through the woods. So the woods are going to be silhouetted, but that lovely early sky is going to draw you through. Excuse my back as I'm standing in front. But hopefully it doesn't take away the view of what I'm painting. A little taller here and here, a little bit there. And in a moment, I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to pick up some more paint grow. So you pause, you get the trees up to this level, and then when you've done that, start my video again. And I'll be putting in these bigger trees in the foreground. This is more paint grow, less water. I'm putting in just the straightest line as I can to start with, to know where I'm going. And then I'll break off here at the top to create some branches breaking out of the trunk of the tree. Get the width I need, making the base slightly bigger, then sweeping up and off the page. Break a branch here and come back down and do the same on this one. Just take the branch off, make it thicker and break another branch and follow it straight down. Another one over here. Again, I start with a straight line, a little water on the paintbrush, mostly paint grey, and I just start from the bottom and run the line straight up first, and then follow it up with some more paint and down. I'm making it wider as I go, pushing a little bit of weight on the brush that opens up the brush to give you a wider mark. Just get that to the bottom. And go up and break off for a branch and one off there. Picking up some more paint and putting another tree over here. Straight line in. Picking up some more paint. Making the base straight up. Wider at the bottom. That and then take the tree up. And then I'm going to go up and split away for a branch. Then 
with the paint on my brush I'm going to flick in some grasses and flick them up gently don't push hard on the brush just gently along the edge of the path around the edge and at the base of the trees so it places them down on the ground they're not floating in midair I'm going to cover the whole of the base continue just flicking up until the brush starts to run out of paint and then I'll pick up some more I'm going to every tree that I've put in at the moment and just flicking little grasses at the base of them. Covering most of that base up with grass. Keeping the edge of the path in line with the horizon line so it looks like it's laying straight across, not going down a hill. Just keep adding grasses. Pick up some more paint. The darker the paint now, the closer. In the one, I'm going to just leave that to dry, so you pause and then start when you've got all the grasses in. So it's going to dry a third lighter, and I'll come in with some more Payne's Grey. I'm going over the trees in the foreground to make them darker than they are, leaving some of the light grey to come through. see here I'm not rushing you just take your time keep within the lines of the tree you put on first try not to go over the edge and bring it up to the top and break away that branch picking up some more paint grey not too much water just a damp brush and again follow the lines And some of the light colour of the tree showing through. I'm going to do the same with the trees in the foreground. Just to make them darker. To bring them closer. And to push the background further back to create more depth and distance within your picture. Keep within the line. Hopefully you're following along with me. You can always stop the video wherever you want and paint up to that where I've got on mine and then start the video again. It's entirely up to you. I've let it dry now and I'm picking up a natural sponge that you get from any good art shop and we're just paint grey with no water on this at the moment I'm just dabbing in some foliage on the trees in the background if there's any questions you've got you can always leave them in the comments below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can 
about some of the materials I use or even the techniques. You can always look onto my webpage as well, which is briandavenportartist.com. And there's an email address there you can contact me on. Just putting in more foliage on this side. Just gentle, just touching it on. Don't push too hard with the sponge. Just like no water on this, just a little bit of wet paint. Just gently tap the sponge to the paper. Picking up the roughness of the paper with the sponge. Creating this lovely texture. I'm doing the trees in the distance here and the foreground. As you can see, and in a moment I'm going to do the side here and come down halfway down the, the tree trunks, so it gives the impression of leaves lower down. I'm just gently doing this. This is filmed in real time. All my videos are. So you're following along exactly with me. I want to leave that little bit of light in the middle of those trees there. Just off centre. Which will just draw you in. Just continue with the sponge at the moment. I think I need some more so I'm picking up some more paint here. Just making it a little bit darker around the centre part of that light in the middle of that tree just to make it stand out even more. I'm going to pick up some more paint now, some more Payne's Grey and a little water, left it to dry. So again, you do your trees, and once you've done your trees, start the video again, and I'll start on the top of these big trees. And this is more Payne's Grey, and a little water. Again, not too much water, because it will dilute the colour, so we want it nice and strong, and very dark. Filling in the tops of the trees, giving the impression that there's foliage above our heads as we're walking through this woodland. Bring it down a little lower. You can see it's much darker. Go over the trunks of the trees. darker here what I'm doing pick up some more paint and try to balance up the picture but not too symmetrical just gently add a few little ones in soft leaves there and there not too many keep some of the light coming through the trees the moment this is finished, I'm going to put a temporary mount around it. Once it's dry, and I'm going to hang it on the wall for you to see the finished picture. There's the finished picture. You've got the light in the centre there, drawing you in. I thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it and painting it. And hopefully see you next week where we'll be painting snow. Thank you for watching.